Do you ever shoot anything other than a 500 Magnum? Nope. I just love shooting my 500 Magnum. Don't you think it's a little weird that that's all you like to shoot? No. You know what people say about guys who just shoot big handguns all the time? Um, no. What do they say? They say that they have extremely tiny feet. Now, I, I don't have tiny feet. I wear like a size 15 shoe. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. I guarantee you, you are stuffing those shoes. Let me see your foot. No, let me see your foot, Scott. Okay, I'll show you my foot. <sighs> oh man, I always knew it. I knew you had tiny feet. Look at that little foot. Why aren't you wearing socks? That's disgusting. You're so gross. What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics where we're back on the range for yet another gun fail science experiment. At this point we have pushed 250 cals, a bolt action rifle, and a Glock to a catastrophic failure. Today we have yet another gun. This one I'm really excited about. Let me go show you what we got and we're going to get started. So the last handgun we pushed to a catastrophic failure was a Glock 19. Today we're going to step it up a little bit. We have a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. This is the largest production of handgun available and it shoots this gigantic 50 caliber round that goes all the way up to 700 grains. So first we're gonna have some fun with this thing and show you just how powerful it is. And then we're gonna load it up with a super spicy round and see what would happen if you had a catastrophic failure with a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Also, I'm sure you noticed the new shirt. Ever since I broke out a 500 Magnum on the channel, the number one negative comment has been compensating. So I thought I would take all those negative comments and turn it into a hilarious shirt. This is a limited run. I'm not really sure how long I'm gonna have them out, but it is a limited run. If you wanna check them out, there's a link in the description down below. Try a new technique. So we're gonna start out by shooting a few interesting targets with the 500 Magnum so you can see just how powerful this thing is. We're gonna start out with one gallon of gray Poupon. There's about to be Poupon everything. It is a hot one today. This shirt is gonna be a different color by the end of this video. We got our gray Poupon, we got our 500 Magnum, and a 275 grain hollow point. I think I got some poop on my camera over there. All right, we got some lovely yellow here on our canvas. Now I say we add some red. This is a six pound can of tomato paste. Okay. Got a little bit of sauce on my shirt. This is really turning out nicely. Look here, how the yellow and the red are mixing together. I think we just need to add one more color. Our last target is a six pound can of white gravy. Okay, I've scooted back just a tad because when you get this gravy on you, it's, it's gross and it's really hard to get out of your clothes. Maybe this will help. As you can tell, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum is a very, very powerful handgun. Now let's find out what would happen if you had a catastrophic failure with a handgun of this caliber. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, NYX Handmade Boots. NYX Handmade Boots are the best boots on the market. They're handmade in the USA in their family owned and operated facility. They're the highest quality and today I'm gonna try them out. They boost your agility. Up next is the sledgehammer test. Turns out these don't have the safety toe option, but they do offer a safety toe option. 
Remember the boots from Terminator? These are not those boots, but the Terminator totally would have rocked them. Nobody likes big plants! Oh, that one went pretty high. Turns out Nick's handmade boots are pretty good. If you want to check them out, use my link in the description down below. I'd really appreciate it. Again, a big thank you to Nick's Handmade Boots for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's go load up a spicy round. Okay, after about an hour and a half of setup, we are ready to go. We're trying to be as safe as possible, so it takes a little bit of extra time. I have the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum in a vice grip. We have a Ballistic Dummy Labs head and hands today. A big thank you to them for sending those over to us to be used in today's video. I have a string that goes through the cinder block and about 150 yards that way, and I'll be hiding behind a truck when I pull that string, and it's attached to a metal hook here. I also may have created a barrel obstruction, so we have maximum worst case scenario. Now the only thing left to do is to load it. And we've got this little booger right here. Normal operating pressures for a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum are 60,000 PSI. This guy is putting out upwards of 450,000 PSI. That's a spicy meatball. All right, we're gonna move this hand off here gonna open our cylinder. This rotates this way, so we're gonna stick it in right here, and then we will place it about right. All right, we'll put our hand back up on the gun, and that is pretty much it, folks. All righty, here we go. Gonna pull the string, but before I do, are you subscribed? If you're not, you better hit that subscribe button or I'm not gonna pull the string. I'll wait. Okay, I'll pull the string. Here we go. It's gonna be bad. Go check that out. Okay, well, it looks like uh, we definitely had a catastrophic failure. We just go ahead and start moving stuff so that we can get a better look at this. A few moments later. Oh, darn it. Ew. <laughs> oh, that's how you know it's hot, right? Was just. <laughs> okay. Oh, gross. Oh, got the gray poupon on it. Okay, so after reviewing the slow-mo footage, most definitely the cylinder detonated. Looks like it hit our cinder blocks here, and then some of it hit the slow-mo camera. The slow-mo camera is okay, but next time I may wanna scoot it back a little bit. It looks like the top part of the frame right here also broke. So the cylinder is completely gone. <laughs> we have a piece of the cylinder right here that is crazy after reviewing the slow-mo footage it didn't look like any really big chunks hit the zombie head but there was a lot of shrapnel as for your hands it's kind of hard to tell but i would say you'd have a few boo-boos on your fingers the barrel is unobstructed so that means the round managed to push out our blockage and come out the end of the barrel ah Slit all in my eyes. Compensating, more like condensating. Oh my gosh. Ah. With these cinder blocks here, it appears that the other piece of the cylinder smacked these cinder blocks with quite a bit of force. So, if you had a catastrophic failure with a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, would you survive? I would say, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of shrapnel that came out of this thing you would definitely have some injuries, most likely. I don't know how severe they would be, but it would not be pretty. 
Now that we've pushed a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum to its limits, which firearm would you like to see fail next? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, well that's gonna be it for today's video. I had a lot of fun. If you did too, do me a big favor and give today's video a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistic Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you want to pick up a shirt. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. I'll see you next time.